uh, after that first win over Palace at the weekend. It's now the Champions League tonight against Young Boys as they look to finish off the group stage um, in fine fashion. Of course, they lost to Young Boys in the first game, didn't they? Now, one of the first things that Ralph Rangnick has done has been to appoint a full-time sports psychologist. He was asked about it, and this is what he had to say when he asked, did he find it strange that United didn't actually have a full-time psychologist in place at the club already? For me, it, it is absolutely logical. I even had somebody like this Hans-Dieter Hermann, the current um, um, sports psychologist of the German national team uh, back in 1998. In Ulm, we were probably the first club in Germany who has ever employed a sports psychologist in him. For me, it's only a, que a question of logic. I mean, if you have special coaches for goalkeeping, for physical education, for uh, even for strikers, for whatever, um, for fitness, you also should have an expert for the brain and not so much to put them on the red sofa and holding hands for the players because most of them won't do that anyway. Um, and for me, it's about helping the players to that the brain should, should assist the body and not work against it. So yes, Sasha Lenza is the psychologist that has been brought in by Ralph Rangnick to Manchester United. You heard him there saying, look, if you can have specialist coaches with goalkeepers and strikers, for example, then why wouldn't you want to add to your coaching staff by having someone like a psychologist yeah. who are going to help players in obviously a different way? Um, Trevor, you're a coach. Um, you've been a player. How important is a sports psychologist? Well, I didn't realise how important it was until, what, 97, 98. I um, had a bad knee injury. Um, I'd always been able to deal with things myself. I came back from the injury and I couldn't find a performance. And I was trying different ways to get myself prepared for games. And I just couldn't get that consistency in performances. I hired a, um, a psychologist, Keith Power, I'm still friends with him today. Um, he came and he helped me. And uh, he helped me understand that the brain's probably the biggest asset any footballer's got, any person's got really, but any footballer um, has got. And basically um, just helped me structure myself properly get rid of all the noise, um, concentrate on um, using different techniques um, to get my performance right, visualisation, positive memory. Um, and for me, it worked superbly well. Um, I, a few months after I got moved to West Ham, scored seven goals in 14 games and we finished fifth. And I went on a really good run back into the England squad from there. But until then, I couldn't find a performance. And for me... This tells me that Manchester United, one, weren't supporting the players properly. And two, they, they can't, under, the people that were in charge at Manchester United can't understand what it takes to be an elite athlete because they have not had the support that every athlete needs. Well, we should say that they have at times used a sports psychologist. They just haven't employed one full time. We should say that with Manchester United. It does, though, seem a little strange when we have... Simon, in recent years, talked about an awareness of mental health, that a club as big as Manchester yep. United have only just now decided to bring someone in full time. Interesting. He's been a sports psychiatrist at FC Schalke and Donna Dresden. Donna Dresden finished bottom of the league um, when he was in there as a sports psychologist. So I'm not sure what that says about him or says about them, full stop. But look, sports psych psychology is a is a necessary evil to serve a greater good. You have to get buy-in from the players because it can't be mandatory with players. Players have to see the benefit. If you start enforcing it upon players, then you're, you're crossing one barrier with another. Everything that can be added to the equation to enhance a player's performance is fundamental. So it's not surprising to me. Ranić obviously believes in it. It's part of his stock in trade and believes it's a tool that's available to be utilised by the players. It'd be interesting to see how he wants to utilise it with them, whether he's going to want them to see the, this psychologist or give them instructions to see the psychologist or allow them to have their own choice on it. The last frontier in everything is the mind. You can see, if we're talking about rehabilitation from people having injuries or people from losing confidence... The last frontier is always the mind when it comes back from injuries because people can see an injury, they can see an ACL, they can see a problem, right? And they fix that. And there tends to be a slightly blinkered attitude, less so in, in modern football than it was previously, that, 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 that this doesn't get dealt with. And then this becomes about now looking at elite performers and trying to unlock a degree. And the interesting dynamic, it's, a, it's a, an expression that's often used, which is getting the mind to work with you rather than against you. And that's what he's talking about. He's making sure that there's clear lines between the player's innate ability 
and their mind controlling the output to make sure their ability operates at a certain level. I think it's a, I think it's a fundamental. I think if you look across the board, I'd be surprised without prior knowledge that the elite teams in most leagues, in specifically our Premier League for point of reference, would have sports psychology. How these Man United players will react to it, given some of the personalities that are there, will be interesting to see. Uh, and how he wants to bring it in will be even more interesting to see, because if he's going to mandate it, Trevor will tell you, and I'll hand over to him in a second, what he would feel if he was mandated mm. to do something, rather than given the choice to do it. Because if you're given the choice to do something, then you approach it with a different mindset. If you're mandated to do it, and you don't particularly buy into that philosophy, then you're already doing it with a different mental persuasion than perhaps the one that you should be. If you were told, as a yeah. player, something you hadn't done before, specifically this area, you're doing it by a coach, what would your reaction be? Well, I think it, you'd be sceptical because, you know, especially if before my injury, I felt everything was going superbly well. I, you know, I'd gone from Blackpool in the fourth division, gone to the Premier League, started playing first team football for Queen's Park Rangers, scoring goals, assisting big Les up front. And I thought, this is great. I love football. And everything was going great. Performances were consistent. And if someone said to me, by the way, you've got to go and see a sports psychologist, I don't think I would, would take to that too well. And I, I would probably go in there and think in one ear, out the other. The fact that I knew I was having problems and I knew that I couldn't solve these problems myself and it wasn't physical. I was fit. I was going to the gym after training. I was doing all this different extra work to try and get the performance right and consistent and I couldn't get there myself. But do you think that's the difference though from then and now because we are talking more openly about mental health? Well, so think, players I, are maybe are more tuned in with themselves I think they will more. be. I think they will be, especially with the pandemic, what we've been through over the last two years. I think there's been a, a huge uh, shift on the understanding of mental well-being. And I think players understand that. And if their mental well well-being's right, then at least they can box that off and say, you know what, I'm conflate, ready for this we game. We mustn't conflate the two issues. No, of course this, not. Because this isn't about mental health. This is about performance enhancement. But so, I think they're all connected Yeah, they as can well. be connected, so as Trevor was saying. Sure. If you're going to somebody with anxiety or depression, then you're going to have your mind looked at in a certain way. If you're going to somebody that's operating at 90% of their potential and you want them to go to 92% or 93% or whatever the dynamics of it are, that's a different kind of approach and a different kind of psychology. So this is about enhancement rather than the removal of problems, I suspect. I think it's a bit of both. If you ask me if it's enhancement, I would say, well, when I went into that meeting with Keith Powell for the first time, it was desperation. Because not only was my performance not consistent and not good enough for where I'd set my but own standards, is, but what? But yours what, is a different what, dynamic. You're coming back from injury. Yeah, we're I understand. Talk, we're talking about a guy but this is proactively. So we're talking making about a guy, maybe we're talking making about a guy sure that players in to look at a, a fully fit squad of players yeah. and to look at why they aren't operating at a level which Ranjek would see is conducive to Man United being a successful time in the six months that he's going to be here, and by very definition, probably the longer that he actually wants. Yeah. So I, I think this is more about enhancing the performance, making sure that no stone is unturned. He's going to, he's going to. I mean, he, he sounds like he's going to beast them physically as much as you can for, in the middle of the season, but try and raise the levels that are there, although it's going to be difficult because you're either fit now or you're not, aren't you, really? Mm. And now he's trying to add another string to make sure that every aspect of every nuance that he needs to go through will be looked at properly. So if he, at the end of six months, he can't turn around and say, well, we didn't do everything that we mm. could do. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's true as well. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1, on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker, TalkSport.